Hello and welcome back to Quitting Together, where recovery doesn't have to be done alone. My name is Aaron and today is a very special video. It's my first uh, long form interview that I'm putting out and it is with my wonderful, beautiful wife, Stephanie. And uh, when I first started this channel, I really, and, and getting the ideas of interviewing some people, uh, this obviously she came to mind because this is the person that has had to deal with my addiction the most and seen me at my worst seen me at my best, and has loved me through all of it, uh, whether I deserved it or not. And so I think this is gonna be a pretty raw uh, interview, and I don't know what's gonna happen or what we're gonna say, and maybe I'll cry, maybe she'll cry, maybe we won't cry, but either way, we're here, and uh, it's gonna be a, a good time, and hopefully it can help some of you, and I know it's going to help me. I've already told her ahead of time to be completely transparent and open, and nothing that she can say is gonna hurt me, uh, because you know, I'm sober now, and I think it's important for me to, with this sober mind, understand uh, how I am when I'm not sober, because it's really, it's wild, it's really hard for us to accurately judge ourselves when we're in that mindset, because we have all kinds of addiction, things that are going on in our mind, convincing us that we should keep smoking. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce Stephanie, and uh, she's never done anything like this before, <laughs> so. Uh, this is going to be interesting, but I just, yeah, I just want to start off. I guess we'll tell, talk a little bit about our relationship. We've been together a long time now, since the a end little, of 2015. Yeah, a little over eight years now. Yeah, so almost a decade. Just married six. And we've been married six years, and we have a child together, and we live in this wonderful house. Uh, but we've been through a lot of different things and uh, a lot of different stages of life. So mm -hmm. um, when we first started dating... I was smoking weed a lot. All the time, yeah. And I lived with three, room, guys. three roommates. <laughs> it, it lived, it lived basically in a bachelor pad, and we all smoked weed a lot, but you did not smoke at all at that point. Very rarely. I had a roommate, and she smoked occasionally, but it was never, like, it was never kept in the apartment enough for us to smoke daily. Like, it was like, hey, I got some, and let's smoke, and then I would, and other than that, it was never, like in our house or in our apartment like that so but i smoked i smoked with your roommate when you were at work and, yeah, stuff, yeah. and i'd be waiting for you to get off and she'd be like oh you want to smoke and uh to me at that point in my mind it's like oh yeah cool my wife my girlfriend at the time has a cool roommate that smokes but um and you were actually pretty against it at first when we first started dating or at least against m me smoking in the sense i think it's when we moved in together is when i got a little more serious yeah. About how I felt with it. Well, because I, I don't know if I realized like how much you were smoking until we lived together and I saw how much we were smoking. Whereas when I lived with my roommate and we'd smoke here and there, it's like we didn't live together. Mm -hmm. Then when we lived together, it kind of like hit me that it was it was a lot more than I thought. Totally. And it's a big lifestyle change if you're not used to that. Had you, I don't even know if I've ever asked you this, but like in previous relationships, did you ever date somebody that was a pothead? No, no. The one that you knew, I don't think he ever really smoked. Yeah. And my ex before you definitely didn't. He he was very, like, against it. He had a couple friends that would smoke here and there, but we were never involved with it. Yeah. So it's... So you were, like, the first yeah. one that was, like, hardcore yeah. smoking. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, I was at a point in life where... It just made sense because all my roommates did. Yeah, and, all, and I mean, I was, you were in a traveling band at the time. Yeah, and... I was in my early 20s, mid-20s, mid I guess. Yeah, at that point, you were mid. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so what were, what would you say was the, do you remember the first time you felt as though it was a concern? Or, like, did you tell a friend? Or did you, like, ask anybody for advice? I don't remember, like, when it became a concern. I mean, it probably was after... Justinian moved in with us because I don't think he smoked as much as you either and mm -hmm. I just remember asking like if you had always smoked this much mm -hmm. and he said you didn't when you guys were younger because it wasn't a big thing but definitely in the past couple of years that he knew you he said he, that it seemed like it was more prominent in your life than it had been before um I can't remember the first time because I feel like we had a fight over something and that came up in our argument of I felt like you were smoking too much and that might have been when you had the idea of cutting back maybe well I remember when we first were together there was something you said something to me like uh I just don't want it in my life 
which was like it was kind of the opposite Went from all to of, nothing yeah yeah it was it, and and for me being in a new relationship whenever you're in a new relationship you know the last thing you want is your partner to try to control your life and like to me i i was already an addict at that point whether yeah. i didn't admit it then or i didn't really understand it or I, I probably was going under the assumption that weed wasn't addictive still but i'd never tried to quit <laughs> And so to me, it was like, yeah, one day I'll just stop and then it'll be fine. And like right now I am smoking. But before you, the girl that I had dated for a little while, she also would have a problem with it to the point that she would sometimes not even come into our basement that we had because she was trying to make a point of like, I'm yeah. not going to be around. Ever. And so then when we started dating and you said stuff like that, I was, it, you know, in my attic just mind. Just kind of like a flashback. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. here it is again. Like, I can't, like, what everything else about this girl is so cool, but she doesn't and like I know, weed. I know when we first started dating, too, I, I mean, obviously we think about those arguments now as, you know, older adults. I feel like it could have been handled better, but you know, being young and dumb. It was more like, I need you to get rid of this. And for you, like you said, just being in that addiction state of mind, it was like, I've been doing it for so long. Why, yeah. why get rid of it now? Well, and, and it, to me, I, and I, I can be transparent about this now. It's been a, a while, but that was the, we we're very honest with each other. We're very open with each other and we have a really good relationship, but that was the one thing that I, was just so dishonest about because in my mind, I was I, literally the way I would justify it is, okay, she's overreacting about this stuff. It's gonna hurt her to know that I'm smoking this much. So if I just don't tell her, then the relationship will be better and she'll feel better. And like, if I can handle my stuff, like, why does it matter? And, and it did if I didn't know, like it did technically in a way get better because I didn't know that yeah. you were still smoking as much as you were because yeah. you were very good at you know. Yeah, just you want to tell tell the story of uh, <laughs> yeah, tell them tell them the story of the time you caught me. Yeah, so at this point, I think we had agreed that you were done smoking, right? I think you were like saying that you were completely going to be done with it, right? Yeah, I, I don't remember exactly, but probably. I think that was that tends I to think, be what I say. <laughs> well, no, but I think it was I was pushing you to quit, and so eventually you just agreed to it, and so at this point, we both. The agreement was we both thought that you were done smoking and then I started kind of noticing that your behavior changes when obviously when you're high compared to when you're sober. So I knew something was going on but I didn't have any proof because you weren't buying bud and so my I remember eyes get, my eyes get real like weird looking when it's I'm high. Glassy, but <laughs> it's not even that. It's just like your demeanor changes. Yeah. Like sometimes you get a more pep in your step and I can tell that you know you, you know, just get more done and stuff. And so I remember finally realizing that like oh he's he's definitely smoking like i know without a doubt and i remember walking in to your studio which is at our old house so it was like attached to our house but in a separate building kind of and i remember walking over and the first thing i heard was you like throwing something out the door and of course i'm obviously going to get into the defense mo or i guess offense mode and kind of be like, are you really smoking right now? You're like, no. And I'm like, would you throw out the door? It's just a pen. I'm like, why would you throw a pen out the door? And then coming to realize no, it was a weed pen. I think I first said, oh, I didn't throw anything out the yeah. door. <laughs> well, that's what you did. And then I said, no, you definitely did. And then come to find out, you like threw a weed pen. And of course, we got into an argument over yeah. the fact that you were smoking and that you were trying to hide it. But we look back at it now and it's like kind of a funny story because like five you could have put it literally a million other places, but instead you just throw it out well, I was, the door. Yeah, I was afraid that you would look for it or find it or I, I don't That's know. That's true, yeah. Um, yeah, I had lots of ways of hiding it and being deceptive. And but once I, they came out with weed pens, it made it a lot easier because you didn't smell yeah, like but it. Yeah, but I didn't like pens, so I would still figure out ways. Yeah. Like, right, so this is probably something you, you don't know that I'm just remembering right now. Um, but we used to have a neighbor who had an abandoned house next to us and uh, nobody was in there ever. And so the times that I did want to, like there was times where you knew I was smoking, but I was, it was like, I was barely smoking or I'm only smoking at night or whatever. And I would go into the abandoned house and have like a little setup so that I could smoke and not smell like it and be away from it. And genuinely in my mind, it was okay. Like she doesn't want it in her life. So if I just do it on my own when I'm not around her and when she's not going to be upset about it, blah, blah, blah then that's what I would do. And so I could, I, I had my whole setup. My studio's right here. I can go right across and go to this house and smoke weed and be fine. And it was so, so, so stupid looking back because 
I don't lie about anything else. You know what yeah. I mean? But it, but it really, and, and in my mind, it was, well, not really being dishonest. It's just that, like, it would hurt. She would feel bad if she knew. And, like, and she's wrong for feeling bad if she knew because, like, really, it's not a big deal. And none of the rest of my friends care. And my girlfriend is the only person in my life that cares, blah, blah, blah. But really, maybe, like, looking back, it was that you were just the only person that really cared enough about me to see how it was negatively affecting my life. And so... Well, I think you said no one really realizes that it's addictive because they play it off as, you know, it's not physically addicting, obviously, like, heroin and stuff like that, but, you, I mean, you were mentally dependent on it to sleep, yeah. to eat, to, you know, sometimes you said that it would help you be more creative with your work, it would help you get stuff done, and... I'm not disagreeing with those things, obviously, in that time of our life. It did help you in a lot of ways. It just, it definitely, like, I noticed it got to a point where if you didn't have it, your demeanor would change. You know what I mean? Like, well, and at that point, I don't think we really understood enough about how, like, how badly I withdraw when I stop this stuff. Because you were so, smoking it for so long, yeah, but not taking long yeah. enough breaks to even hit withdrawal, I think. Well, and for, for me, for us to be like, okay, yeah, I just won't smoke anymore. In your mind, if you've never had to deal with that or know what that is, then it's like, okay, he sh why can't he just stop? Because one thing that's very different between you and I, like, even though we, you know, not now, but like we smoke together, like all that stuff you can just not do it and not think about it again. And, and if, you know, it's been a month and a half and one of your friends is like, here's a pen, you could hit it once and then not That's smoke it, again. Yeah. For, and for me, if I hit it once, one of two things is going to happen. I either would immediately have to tell you and the other people that are holding me accountable and you guys and all of that stuff, or I'm going to start smoking again all the time because... But it's just how I am. And, I, and I'm at least at a point now where I can admit that and be honest about that with myself. You yeah, know? it's just like, it's almost like you don't have enough restraint to just say, we're going to do this one time and then I'll be fine. It's like, it's almost, you You kind of go down this like downhill spiral because you'll go from like, no, I'm fine. Like if I just smoke it once a day, like none before nine was a big thing that I know you like to do. It went from that to I'll smoke once in the morning and then once at night, and then it'll just be three, four, five times a day morning every time. And nap you, and night. Yeah, and then well, it's like any time you would take a break from your work, you would smoke or you know, and yeah. so there was no restraint for you, like not enough to be like, okay, I can smoke it once and be okay for a couple months. It's yeah. once it starts, it there's no stopping. Yeah. It just goes. And then eventually I'm choosing it over everything in the sense of I don't want to do anything unless I'm stoned. There's times like when my, you know, when my mental health and stuff is really, really low where I would be, I would smoke in our basement and I'd be stuck in the basement for hours, hours and, yeah. and hours. And, it, and, and part of it is because, you know, we have a daughter and I didn't want her to see me that way when I'm that mentally, like the idea of being around her felt horrible just because I... I never wanted her to see me in that light. And if you want to know what I look like in that light, you can go to watch uh, one of the videos I posted like 10 days ago or something. And it says it's my day one or uh, something like that. And there was a video I posted a month before that. And you could see the difference. Like I'm, I'm not in a good spot mentally. And it's because I'm smoking all the time. And like, what does that do on your, if your baseline is always being high, not only on just weed, but the weed of today, where it's the strongest yeah. weed you can get. And now we have dispensaries, it's, yeah, dispensaries where I can go in and say, give me the strongest stuff you have. It's like and, being an alcoholic and living next to a liquor store. Once you have the access to it, yeah. it's, you know, you're going to want to do it. Totally. And I think that we're not, I don't think we're in, open enough and honest enough about that. Like if you go to buy cigarettes from a gas station, there's a sign that says this causes cancer. If you go to buy alcohol, there's a sign that says you have to be this age and alcohol is a addictive substance stuff. But there's none of that with weed when you go there. And we're just, I don't think we're honest with it because you know, everybody kind of treats it as if it's the way that you deal with weed. Like yeah. it's not addictive and like, oh, blah, blah. but all the people I know that smoke all the time that say it's not addictive have never tried to quit. And if I bring up that they should quit, they're immediately or like maybe try it to see how you feel. They're like, oh, no, I don't need to do that. Or, well, no, it's what keeps me sane or like it helps my anxiety. All the same exact excuses that I've made, but because they've never I tried think to too, quit. And I a big thing with you is that you always compared yourself to other people not knowing anybody's backstory you know what i mean yeah. like you're like well all my friends can smoke and they're fine but like when i do it i i get to this bad mental state but you have no idea what yeah. they're doing at home like they could be looking at you and being like man aaron smokes all the time and he seems fine if anything i'm the most fine <clears throat> because i'm the only one 
that's married, that has a kid, that has their own yeah. house, that had like, so I could see how I could be that negative influence on them too. Like, well, if Aaron's in charge of the band and all, and, and doing all this, all this and still smoking, then like, what is the point? If he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. But other, at home, they could be in the same mental state that you were a couple uh, years ago. You yeah. know what I mean? Just other than the mental stuff, like I'm, I'm incredibly high functioning for how much weed I smoke. Like if you smoked yeah. the same amount of weed that I smoked, I'm you useless. wouldn't be able to get <laughs> off the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and she'll even say, there's times where I've offered her a pen or whatever, and she'll be like, I can't do that because I have to yeah. be with our daughter and stuff. And for me, it's like, well, I want to go smoke, and then me and our daughter are going to go play fire truck for an hour. Yeah. Or like, we're going to go for a really cool adventure or something like that. And for me, it was it was better t- to do it at night because I definitely 100% within an hour would be asleep. Yeah. And I think, too, for me, like smoking during the day, now that we have a daughter, like, if we don't have a daughter, it'd be different. But now that we do, it's like, I get this anxiety that's like if I'm too high and I can't god forbid something happens Mm -hmm. and I can't take care of her like I could never live it down and so for me it was not like I just I couldn't I mean it's the same way obviously with drinking like I wouldn't be drinking during the day while our daughter is awake either yeah but for me like I could smoke as much as I want and I you get to a certain level of like I don't remember the last time I was too high yeah like I don't even know if you've ever seen me too high like ever seen me to the point where like where I can't function unless it's like an edible or something like that but like from smoking like I could smoke I don't know now it's been (laughs) but you know like in general, like the last day before I quit, I pretty much smoked an entire quarter of weed to get rid of it. Because yeah. well, because and I went and got, got yeah, 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 exactly. It was like it was like I well, I ran out like two days before I was going to quit, and I went and got more just so that I didn't have to quit two days early. And how sad is that? But you know, that's exactly the mental state that I was in because it almost it feels like breaking up, like losing a best friend in a sense that of course, it's the always the been day, there like, for me. It does, yeah, in a way, you know. It temporarily masks the problems. If yeah. I, and you've seen it. There's times where I am having an anxiety attack or panic attack, and I will go and smoke, and then I come back up, and I'm fine. And and but only fine for a little bit. Couple like it's hours, just yeah, yeah, exactly. There was even so I tried to quit uh, for December as well, and by a week in, both her and my friend were like this is not a healthy thing for you right now because I was also trying to, it was my busiest month of work. It was, so I was trying to detox while also juggling all that. And I was just having panic attacks, panic attacks all day. I was just, it was horrible. And then I just started smoking again. And for those three weeks I smoked my ass off. But then this time, the difference was I took that whole first week off of work. Work. Yeah. And that made a big difference because the only thing I had to focus on was just not. And even then, I mean, you sort of deal with the withdrawals of detoxing totally. so not sleeping so adding that plus having to do work would have just been like just like in december you just would have been overwhelmed and very irritable like yeah. obviously irritation is one of your top totally. withdrawal symptoms it's the so. irritation and the not sleeping and yeah. they go hand in hand i mean even yesterday we were doing taxes all day and i was great in the morning i felt fine and then it's enough things where you get set up to the brim and normally when I start to feel that way, that's when I would be like, okay, I just got to go smoke. Yeah. I got to take a break and smoke and then I'll be good. And I don't have that. And then all of a sudden it explodes over and I'm laying on the floor in a panic attack. And, uh, but then I have other things that help get me out of it. Talking to friends or taking a shower or I literally, at one point I just said, I got to get out of here. And I just walked around the block. And by the time I got back, it was just enough that I wasn't overflowing with that, like, Thing. And it felt really good to go to bed last night and know, like, yo, that's, like, about as bad as it gets. And we got through it. Yeah, and yeah. today, like, I feel so much better. And and so I think it's important to know that those moments pass. Um, they definitely suck in the moment. <laughs> totally, totally. What are some, uh, so can you give me some, like, what are some of the things <clears throat> that are different about me when I am high all the time? Um... Both positives and negatives, like what, what yeah. in my personality. I feel like negatives is the fact that you like constantly have to keep up with smoking. It, it would it wouldn't be so bad if you did the here or there, but it's the fact that like, all right, I'm going on a break. I'm also going to smoke. Oh, I'm going on a break, but I'm also going to smoke. And that was that's always a big one for me is just the fact that like now you're taking five or six breaks a day mm-hmm. just to take. However long, I mean, sometimes it'll take a couple minutes, sometimes it could be an hour, you know yeah. what I mean? It depends on how long you choose to sit there. And another thing is, is like when you're high, I feel like you're definitely scrolling on your phone more, which definitely sucks up a lot of your time. I almost think that <clears throat> something I've realized recently is like, 
Like it would be hard. Like I would not if I'm when I'm not smoking like this. I don't want. I have no desire to go and, and get stuck scroll, in a yeah. scroll loop. But like when I'm work, I work a lot, obviously, and and so for me, it was almost like the weed is an excuse for me to have a chance to just sit and do nothing. Because you were already taking a break to smoke. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and and like oh yeah, I'm taking this break to smoke, and then. For me, like some people say, like weed makes you lazy. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think that weed makes you really into whatever you're doing. So if what I'm doing is smoking and then sitting on the couch, I'm gonna get really into just scrolling and getting stuck there. But on the flip side, there's times where I would go down and smoke real quick and then come and work on music work on for stuff, five yeah. hours without thinking about it and just and be very creative and very into it. And, but I think you have to understand that like if you're the type of person that's gonna get stuck to the couch like if you want to be That's productive <laughs> and smoke you have to smoke and immediately get immediately up and get go up. do what you're gonna do um or else you will get stuck in that loop which so. is what i always definitely did which is so. stuck at 9 p.m at night watching a show yeah and just being engrossed in it Totally. Not to mention the smell. I think that's a really big one. Like, especially having her daughter around and stuff, I'm always smelling like it. For me, one of the biggest things that I am worried about, um, even though it's a subconscious thing, is is our daughter, when she gets older, going to have very positive memories that are triggered by the smell of marijuana because I smelled like it all the time when she was in that young developmental stage. And I have a lot of guilt over that. I hope not. Maybe she will. And who knows? I mean, who knows what weed will be like by the time she's old enough for all of that. But yeah. um, that's something I deal with, you know, deal with thinking about a lot. And one of the things that has been a really, you know, reason as why I'm, I'm quitting. I don't, I don't like smelling like it around her. And everybody tells me like, well, you could just do edibles or you could just smoke a pen. And like, sure, that would be awesome if I could do that. But like I love smoking flour, and, and there's and no, you don't like, and edibles are just so. It's yeah, the hit or miss, and it's and either way, it's like how long will I do that before I'm back to look? What, every time somebody's smoking flour, I'm just gonna say no. Yeah, of course not. I love ripping giant bongs and getting as high as I possibly can off of that, and no amount of hitting a pen is gonna get me as high as a bong can get me. The same effect for you, yeah. No, and I, and I like it's almost the feeling, it's that. <gasps> That yeah. big breath feeling and like, it's the, I don't know. So it's rough, but it's, I'm glad to be here. So, so what are your, what would you say the difference is now that I'm not smoking in positive or negative ways or, or I maybe even less so this time because this has not been that long, but like you saw what I was like going for six I was months. Like last year when you went for six months, obviously the first month is always rough because withdrawal and then you're getting used to you know, figuring out your scheduling, and now that you're not scheduling smoke breaks. Yeah. Um, but after that, I mean, you you got really good at scheduling your time. You you woke up and made a plan for every day. You did the gym. You were eating a ton. I mean, you gained a bunch of weight. And, you know, obviously another big factor for your mental health is your weight. And so I think one of your big negatives with long periods of smoking is that you don't eat. Yeah, I get very anxious. In it's not even that. It's like, it's almost like your body forgets that you're supposed to eat and you'll go breakfast, lunch, and then all of a sudden yeah. it's dinner and you're like, I have literally had two potato chips all day and I still don't feel hungry. Whereas yeah. when you were sober, every meal, like clockwork, you were eating, you were we snacking were through the day. Together, yeah, like... you were drinking your shakes. Like, you know, if you were working um, at your job, you would make sure you're going to get lunch. And mm. like, it's a big difference when it comes to that stuff. But definitely the biggest thing was just every day you you knew what you were doing, you knew what plan you had. Mm. And I feel like that eased a lot of your stress because I think sometimes when you're high and you're spending a lot of time smoking, then you feel like you're getting backed up and then you can't, like your brain scrambles on like what you need to remember what you're supposed to do and like, all of that and so you're just overwhelmed with all of this projects that you have and then all of a sudden you're like crap now I have three big projects that are due next week and mm -hmm. I have literally done nothing on them whereas now not now but like last year when you were doing it you had everything planned down to the day where you're like okay I have to have to finish this project by next week so this day and this day I'm doing this and it just seemed like you were in a better headspace because you knew what you were doing when it was due by mm. and what you needed to do to get it done. Whereas when you're high, you're just, everything is scrambled. Your schedule, mm. your, your timing, all of that. You feel late to things because 
to, well, and I will be late to yeah. things. It's, like, it's and, the concept of time is kind of like oh gone. My God, I can't <laughs> forgot, believe I forgot this, and like just freaking out about that type of stuff. Um, well, I feel like because when you're high too, like time almost feels like it's going slower, but all of a sudden two hours went by and you're like, yeah. crap, I literally did not do anything that I wanted to do. Well, and you have to, and you're, I'm scheduling in my ability to smoke, right? I'm like, okay, well, I need to get to the gig by this point, but I want to be able to smoke before I have to load in. So I need to get there like 20 minutes early because I like having that time to myself. And, but also I need to smoke before I leave. <laughs> And so let me load up every, so let me load up now and then that way I'll go down and I'll smoke and I'll pack up my stuff and I'll bring all my weed with me and like, and yeah, and it's, it's wild because I don't, it's, it hasn't even been enjoyable for a long time. Weirdly enough, the only time I really enjoy smoking weed is when I'm with other people, but I would smoke by myself all the time. time, And, and we would smoke together like at night after our daughter would go to bed and that would be our time. And, and sometimes that was the hardest thing about getting me to quit was, well, I really enjoy that time that I have with my wife and we like laugh together and we blah, blah, blah. But it's stupid that I felt like I needed a drug in order to enjoy spending time with my wife. And here we are now, we're 13 days in and last night we had a great time hanging out together and, and all the time, like we still can laugh together and have these good conversations. Well, it's also like you have to think that it's, probably different in your mind because you probably think that I feel the same way about it whereas if there's no weed in the house I'm never gonna smoke yeah you know what I mean like for me if it's available and it's here yeah but if you're not getting it like I'm not going out and buying it you're the one that's getting it which is also a big negative on your budget because you're spending money on that stuff but like if you're not buying it, I'm not smoking And it. I don't care. It's like, that's the only thing that, like, I don't care about money when it comes to that. Because to me, in my mind, especially when I'm ju- doing it, it's like, oh, well, I need to get my work done and I need to do this stuff and I need the weed in order to do that. So by buying the weed, I now can make more money because I'm self-employed and blah, blah, blah. And, like, that's true to an extent only because I'm addicted. Like, only because, like, when you smoke all the time... It's like you all you withdraw pretty quickly, like like in the sense of you need to re up in order to just get back to that baseline. And so that's why you have to smoke all day, every day and why none before nine is so hard, because it's almost the same thing as not smoking in the sense that I go to bed by 10. So like all day, all the times when I want to be smoking, I'm not. And the only time when I really don't care about smoking is I'm about to go to bed is after nine. And so why am I doing that? Why don't we do once in the morning and then once at night? And that way the morning gets me through the day. But then eventually it's like, oh, by noon, I'm like not doing well. And like our daughter's sleeping. So why don't I just go down and hit it again? And then eventually it's in between every event whether it's going to the bank or going to here or to the point that you would know sometimes like I'd be like, Oh, I forgot my keys or I forgot this. And I go in and I come back out and I'm smelling like weed. And she's like, did you hit it? Oh, well, I just cleared what was already yeah. in there. Okay. But so yes, you did hit it. Like, like what, what's the difference between that? It's like when my dad says he, my dad smokes cigars and will say like, well, I don't inhale. What do you mean you don't inhale that? Then what's the point? Like you, it's literally, you're inhaling it. Like you're, maybe you're not inhaling it all the way down to here, but it's coming into your mouth and it's coming into your throat. And like, these are just excuses that we make as addicts. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been wild. Anything, uh, else about any of that stuff? Mm. What would you say? I mean, so like there's even been times, there's times we were on a vacation together and we stopped at a gas station and there was a, uh, and, and this is a very fond memory, but there was a, a weed store attached to it. And, uh, this is when we were in California. Yeah. And we yeah. went and we got the weed and then we pulled it. I don't even know where we went, but we like went somewhere and walked to like this bush so we could smoke it, together. It was, at the end of the, it was at the end of the driveway at the Airbnb we stayed at. We walked, they had like a path down there and oh, that's yeah, what we yeah, did. Yeah. We walked and we had gotten um, pre-rolled joints. Yeah. And I think I only hit it twice and yeah. you definitely finished it. And I was, yeah, we were going to walk Hollywood Boulevard or whatever. And yeah. I could not even get off the bed. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but like, that's just how my addiction, it was like, if I, like, it would be impossible for me, for me to see a dispensary, especially back then when there was yeah, like not around yeah. to see one and not want to go in it and honestly that's still how it has been for me in the sense that like when we're with the band when I'm with my band and we have like an afternoon free 
if there's a dispensary that I see that's nearby where we are, I will absolutely make sure that we can fit that in our schedule. And my bandmates smoke and stuff too, so like they don't mind. But like, it doesn't matter. Like that's it. That is my number one priority, even over eating. Like if when I'm smoking, if the choice is you can go get lunch or you can go sit in your van and smoke. Well, I'm going to smoke because then I'm not going to be hungry anymore after I smoke. I don't get the munchies in the way that most people do. I get the opposite. No, it's, it's like, yeah, because it's like your body almost forgets that you're supposed to eat when you're yeah. stoned. And so that becomes a big thing. Because I feel like when you first start getting back into smoking, you are still in that habit from being sober of eating and eating and eating. And then long term, you can tell that you're going downhill because yeah. you're not eating. You're not even snacking. And, I, you know, your mom and I are definitely trying to always make sure you're at least having a shake or you know fruit and stuff because not seeing you eat at all is 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 a big one that definitely is is very heartbreaking to see and then you try to go back to the gym you take your weight you realized crap mm -hmm. i just lost 20 pounds like more than I, 20 this time but yeah <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like it's so it's yeah. like that also affects you and then instead of thinking i need to get sober you think I need to go get high again because yeah. that'll help me. It's like you said, you're just Feel masking better, yeah. it and that'll at least help me feel better for a couple hours before I decide what to do next. And it's just like that becomes an everyday cycle for you. You take your weight in the morning, you try to eat breakfast, you smoke and then yeah. forget lunch and dinner. Well, when I started again last <clears throat> time, I had gained so much weight that in my mind, it was like, well, I'll never be able, I will, it's not like, even if I lose a little bit of weight from smoking, I'm not yeah. going to lose 45 pounds. And, then it did and here we are. And I've lost almost that much. So I've lost at least 30 pounds. Um, so it's like, well, and, just, and now and that will be so, that will be so hard and expensive and time consuming for me to gain that back. But to me, it's almost, this is the punishment for my actions. And, and I have a weight gain the weight tracker app and you can literally see when Every I quit you last smoked, you can yeah. see last time when I quit and you just see the weight go straight up like literally almost straight up it's so fast that I'm able to gain it because I was working hard at it and then you can see right when I quit and you just or right when I started smoking again and it just comes like this all the way down and now we're almost back to the bottom again we're slowly kind of getting our way back up but uh but now, like, I'm still obviously, like, today I checked my weight and it wasn't what I was hoping for. But instead of it being angry at myself, like, now it's, I look at it and I'm like, what the heck? Like, I'm eating so much more and I'm still not gaining weight. Whereas, which is a better way to, at least to feel, because I know long term I will see those positive effects, than, oh my gosh, look how much weight I've lost because I'm still smoking and I'm still not eating. And, like, I can't afford to lose anymore. And so at least even though I'm still like not I, I'm very self-conscious about my weight and all of that stuff, it's at least the, okay, like this is taking longer than anticipated, but I'm, you know, time plus consistency equals results. Yeah. So speaking of gaining weight, our really fat cat is about to show up. Hi. So you want to join us for this video? Come on. Um, okay. You can crack this out. No, I like this part. This <laughs> so what would you say is, uh, would you say there was a time that was the most heartbreaking to you that had to deal with my addiction? Was there ever a time that you ever just felt like I can't deal with this anymore or like this is too much? Or I that? think, and don't take this the wrong way, Never. because obviously there was a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you weren't telling me that I didn't know about, especially through the hardest part of like your mental darkness. Yeah. Um, it, it had to have been right around the time that you were really feeling suicidal because I didn't know how deep in the hole that you were mm -hmm. and Addie was still very young and you were missing hours and hours of the day, like chunks of day. Mm -hmm. And there was definitely a lot of points where it felt like, you know, I felt like I had to do a lot of housework and then taking care of Addie and then also making sure that you were okay and it felt like it was definitely becoming a lot and I'm not saying that you still weren't doing what you could I'm but I wasn't I mean I was yeah <laughs> I was doing what I could but, but I was it was putting, just yeah. it just definitely got to the point where like I definitely felt like you were choosing weed over our daughter and me yeah. and you'd go missing two three hours and I'd text you are you okay are you coming back upstairs hey I need help with Addie I would like get a shower there's even stuff like that and you were like I'll be up in a minute and then another hour goes by and another yeah. hour 
But like I said, that was at the point where like, I knew that you weren't doing well mentally, but I thought you smoking the weed was supposed to be helping. Whereas I had no idea it was having the opposite effect on you, or I definitely would have stepped in sooner. But I didn't know that it was the thing having the effect on me either. I thought it was everything else. This was before I quit the first time. And I mean, we did have a lot, I mean, we had a baby and yeah. we were trying to figure out. When I had a lot you know, of bad things happen, like during COVID. Yeah. I, and so like everything, home. everything was, it was definitely a very weird time. Like, 2021 and a little bit of 2022, you know, but like I said, in my mind, I thought the weed was, you were going down there because it was helping you. Okay. He's taking time to himself. I get that. This is a lot. And like, if I had known that it was just like you mentally addicted to the point where like you couldn't leave it, yeah. I feel like, you know, we could have stepped in a lot sooner if we knew that well, crap, yeah. this is taking him. It's not helping him. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't really know. I don't think you knew either, but that, like, I just if knew we that knew, something was messed up. Like if up. we knew now, yeah. back then, like we could have helped you out of that dark place a lot sooner. And you probably would have never felt the need yeah. to make that video that you planned on making and, and totally all of that. So there, it was, I mean, it at that point it was my, the only thing I was doing all day was trying to figure out how I was going to get through the day without unaliving myself, yeah. which is what you, we have to say on YouTube because they'll, they'll, uh, no, for sure. Ban it. But like, and I didn't know it was the, the weed that was really contributing it so much to it at that point, or at least getting me not able to get out of it. But once I quit, I mean, that all went away and it hasn't come back since. Like there's been plenty of times where I felt like very depressed or any of that, but I have never had any of those thoughts since like that first time yeah. I quit and, and going through all of that. Um, but there, when I started smoking again this last time, it was probably about at this point, maybe a month and a half, two months ago now, I know there was a time that I came to you and said, hey, I, I'm pretty sure, because you haven't judged me through this, you you said, you know, I would just want you to be happy, blah, blah, blah. But I said, I'm pretty sure I need to, I need to quit again. Because, I, and I showed you my weight app and yeah. showed you like, you can see a direct correlation where the, like, I can't pretend that this is this not, not, it's not the reason. Yeah. Because when, those six months, I felt so much better. Even like right now, I feel like when I'm not feeling good now, it's for tiny little things and I'm still going through the withdrawal okay, you're, of it. it. You're not even, you're almost two weeks out of it. So yeah. obviously you're still, and that's another big thing that was probably hard for me too, is the back and forth, because obviously I want to just you know, support your decision on what you think is best for you. Cause you're going to know what's best for your body. Majority Maybe of, the not time, though, yeah. most of the time, but so like you'd decide to quit. Okay. I'm with you. Like whatever you want to do, like I'll support. And then it's like, I think I can smoke again. And sometimes I was hesitant, like, well, you did have a lot of negatives, but you'd always come forward with like, yeah. well, it helps me do this. And I feel better when I do this and this and this and this. So then I'm like, Hey, I'm here to support you for yeah. whatever you think is right. And then you know, last year when you quit and you did so well, when you came to me after six months and said, I think that I can get back into smoking. And it's just like you said, because I've gained all this weight. There's no way I'll lose it again. Yeah, and yeah. my mental health is I'm so strong. Health, like I'm there's no way the I can lose that day. again. <laughs> yeah. And like, I was, I've learned so much. I was yeah. very, I was very hesitant that time, you know, just making sure like, this is something that you want to, like, you're a hundred percent sure that you can yeah. handle. Like, I'm for it, but I, and I think I suggested a schedule. I said, yeah. if you're going to be doing this then you need to be able to restrict yourself, you need to be able to get into a schedule where it's not all day, every day. And, and then, I, yeah. And I would say, of, of course I can do that. I don't ever want to feel the way I felt before, blah, yeah, blah, blah. And then it just, for you, you just sink. Yeah. But I think I needed that to show me that that really is true that right like i could go six months and feel so much better and, and still give it still, all up yeah for that so but at least you know also going sober this time that you had already made it half a year totally you, and you, i know you, how good you, it feels yeah you did a really good job and you gained the weight and you were exercising and your mental health was great and yeah. you were a lot more present when not just me and addy but you know your My family, your family in general them. yeah because i feel like too a lot of times going away and smoking is also a way to like, you know, not avoid because obviously you're not trying to avoid it, but just like prolong having to... Having my own time in a way. Yeah, yeah, like making sure you're alone and then, you know, coming over and finally being with us. And so I think when you're sober too, you're just, you're very present with everyone. And even totally. you said, you said at shows now, you're not going during breaks and smoking, you're interacting with the, yeah. with the people that 
are there to either see you or have a good time. Either way, you're now interacting with all these people and like getting them to check out your social media and like mm-hmm. listen to singles and like just have conversations with these people. Whereas before you'd smoke and by the time you got back, it was time for you yeah. to go for your next set. When I, before I ever started smoking, like I had no problem making eye contact with people at all. Like, oh, and then when I was smoking, like I would never make eye contact with people. It was because part of it was like I was subconsciously nervous about how high I looked. Like my eyes probably look really messed up. And if I look at people's eyes, they're going to see that. Now realizing that like by having all these shifty eyes and looking everywhere else all the time, makes it look way worse. And then as soon as I stop smoking, I have no problem with that. I'm at the gas station or whatever. And I'm just talking to the, the guy and it's not like I'm in my own little like high world. And, uh, so that's been one of the biggest things that's been a benefit to business aspect. Yeah. It's it's a lot better when you are able to be present with the people who are there to enjoy your show. They're there to, you know, enjoy having a good time. And I don't have the anxiety. Like I can be much more direct with people because I'm not having anxiety. Like the other day when I went to this music store that I've been trying to return this gear for eight months and they keep giving me the runaround, giving me the runaround. They're not returning my texts. They're giving me excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. And uh, so finally, the other day, I'm sober now, and I go in, and I just said, hey, we need to take care of these lights now. I'm happy to stay here as long as it takes until it gets done. And if it's not something you can do, then I'm happy to call corporate while I'm here and see if they can handle it. And the lights are going to be in this week. And they gotten taken care of, and now it's it's resolved. And I had the confidence to be able to do that because I'm sober. It's not like I have, I'm anxious. I'm not, it's not like I'm high. I'm not, you know, so... Um, I, even that is is a very huge benefit in my life, and I'm already seeing the ways my life is positively changing because I can I can now plan for the future and say like because I know I'm not going to be high when this thing happens, it seems so much easier for me to deal with. Yeah. So, um, anything else? I think that's. I think, I think we've covered yeah. a lot of stuff. Thank you guys for watching this video today, and uh, for meeting my wife Stephanie. Maybe we'll bring her back on another time, and. Uh, This is a really good conversation. So uh, if you guys have any questions uh, for me or her or any thoughts or comments, please leave them below. And uh, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Thank you so much.